Bordeaux is famous for tons of things, but predominantly, probably, it's wine. But there's a lot more to Bordeaux than meets the wine. Not limited to Candelay. Candelay is a delicious local treat that you can get all over town and a lot of different varieties, although theoretically this is one of the best in town. It's a rum cake, spongy, kind of crispy on the outside in a way that surprised me. Honestly, it's way better than I would have expected. The first time I had it, I definitely thought I wouldn't like it, and I did, but when I asked my patrons where I should go and what I should eat thereafter in polls over on Patreon, this is not what they voted for. Wow. That's not what my patrons voted for to have me come eat. They wanted me to eat Entrecote Bordelaise. Entrecote is a steak that you can get pretty much anywhere. It's a ribeye steak, Entrecote between ribs, which is always confusing me because I always hear cote, like cote, like the side of something. So this is really, really juicy. So the Entrecote is the part that you can find anywhere in France. Uh, you can get a good steak, hopefully, anywhere in France. Obviously, they're not all made equal, but what makes this unique is the Bordelaise. Bordelaise is the word that means from Bordeaux, right? Like it's like Irish from Ireland, Bordelaise from Bordeaux. And a Bordelaise sauce is special because it's made with wine, is as you'd expect. But the other thing that makes it really nice, traditionally at least, they use bone marrow to thicken the gravy a little bit, which for those of you that have yet to have bone marrow as an appetizer might be thinking that's kind of gross. It's not gross. It's delicious. This is an entrecote. I got it saignant, which means bloody. This is a rare steak. Of course, you can always get at a point, medium, or bien cuit, well done. If you do that, don't tell me about it. I don't want to know. And it's very, very nice. If you're not a meat eater and you want to try something Bordelais, then of course you can just have the wine. That's, that's very much vegetarian. My patrons are the figurative steak of my life. Like they make all this possible. All this going and trying restaurants in Paris in particular to slot into my guide or to share with you on my vlog or just trying all that stuff wouldn't have been possible without them. And honestly, I said this in a little video that I shared only with my patrons recently. The speech that I gave in my like little t-shirt citizenship party when I popped a bottle of champagne. They've made this whole thing possible and they've been with me for a very long time. Some of my patrons have been with me for almost nine years, like eight and a half years, which is crazy. So thank you to my patrons, both for sending me to eat steak, literally, but also for putting food on my table for the last eight years. Deeply appreciate you so much. You mean the world to me. Which leads us to, what the heck's going on these days? Like, I haven't vlogged very much recently. We just put out a video about the Olympics for Paris in my pocket. Thought I'd give you guys a little bit of an update of like, what the heck is happening. And, uh, but I'm gonna eat the steak first. Among the things that have changed that you probably have noticed has been the differentiation between the Paris in my pocket brand from my own personal brand, which we're gonna kind of pull the curtain back here and talk a little sausage shop here. But for those of you that have been following along, uh, my vlog, my personal journey this whole time, feels like it's the right time to make a really clear separation between Jay and Paris. Not that Paris can't be the background to my life, because it is, it's the city that I love, it is my home. But at the same time, if you're coming for informational content, like you wanna go to my channel and you wanna figure out how to do the Louvre or where I would go to eat, that kind of stuff. And then you dig in and you're like, why is he so sad? Like, why are we talking about life stuff? I, I came here to learn how to use the Metro. Probably not the best mix. At least that's how I've been putting it. This is a little wetter than I expected it to be. I know it's a fountain, but I didn't think, Live and you learn. It just makes a lot of sense from a business perspective. And one of the things that I've never really done with YouTube is treat it like a business. Like it's become my livelihood. Thank you so much for watching. Again, thank you to my patrons. The ability to go like independent and, and make videos for a living is a dream. And it's something for which I'm supremely grateful, but I fought making it a business for a long time because I had, I don't know, this idea that maybe I was an artist. And there's something about content creation that is diametrically opposed to the idea of art in so many ways, which is something we can talk about another time. But I, I, I think that this is a change that's been overdue for a long time, if for no other reason than just to organize the content in a way that if you're trying to come to Paris and have a great time, you wanna have one location you can go to get all that information and not get it all jumbled up with the whole like, who is this J guy side of things. So we've spent a lot of time over the last few months breaking out Paris in my pocket into its own YouTube channel, its own Instagram, and its own TikTok, but nobody's following that. Which, fair enough, I mean, I'm not much of a TikTok person myself, so yeah, we'll, we'll figure if we can crack that nut one of these days. But what that means is that ultimately I want to make something of real quality, like high value per minute information about Paris that's accessible and fun and not the stuff that you find everywhere else, which I think is very on brand for me, like lightly irreverent and always looking to provide something. I don't want to go so far as to say the real Paris, but I do want to say the actual Paris that I love, that my friends love, 
that isn't, you know, 1920s Paris, which is nothing wrong with that if that's what you're into, but it's not what we live every day. And so for those people coming to look and see like, well, what is Paris like on an everyday basis? Oh, it's delicious. Oh man, I love Paris, but we're in Bordeaux. And I get asked a lot about this when I say we, the team has kind of changed and evolved over time. But right now, Emily, my assistant, who you've seen a lot, Ariana, who's been editing my reels for almost a year now. She's been the one that's been doing the deep dive onto the Instagram short form and Fazel our new intern. And then of course, Jeff back in the States, making the guide what it is today, like the leveled up online experience with the geolocated app, which might leave you wondering also, oh, how's it going? If you have a team, clearly it's gotta be going really well, right? I think there are two ways to answer the question of how things are going. The first and easiest of which is great in the sense that like, I really come to enjoy the team development side of things. But I made the choice to stop daily vlogging and really pivot straight towards Paris in my pocket to focus on making that into something that could stand on its own two feet that really required focusing in on, you know, Ariana in particular. Emily, my assistant, saves my life on a daily basis and that has been going really well for a long time. Ariana was doing great work, but I felt like I was kind of neglecting her a little bit and not giving her as much attention as I needed to. And driving the focus into Paris in my pocket changed that significantly. And it's made for like a really, really fun time. She's been doing a great job and it's given a great sense of clarity and purpose in what we're doing and where we're headed. But the other side and the one that's a little harder to talk about is Things are down with like tourism. I mean, the numbers are way down for Paris. We see it in what we're doing. Partially it's because I have been putting out a little bit less content, fewer, fewer videos as we go. But we're seeing it with friends. We're seeing it kind of all over the place. Like the Olympics overall do seem to be doing some short-term damage to uh, elements within Paris. And we're feeling that. But I think it's not just that, to be honest. I think it's also the transition period where we've made a commitment for the next six months to a year at least to really put a lot of effort into making Paris in my pocket it, the best thing that it can be. Taking all the experience that I have, all the recommendations, the knowledge that I have about visiting Paris, living in Paris, the connections that I have, the friends that can inject some value into that, like trying to make a series that stands out and is baseline helpful, useful, quick, direct, approachable, and makes finding Paris off of the beaten path something that isn't quite so scary. And also does encourage people to get off the beaten path because kind of back to the Olympic side of things, times may be tight for me right now, but they're really tight for a lot of people that own restaurants, bars, cabs, tourism companies. The summer is definitely looking pretty shaky for a number of people and it highlights for me what makes Paris in my pocket a motivating thing for me, which is twofold. One, anybody that I can help hit the ground running and enjoy the city in a way that like reduces stress, increases joy, that's the first thing. But the second thing is like, how do I help local businesses, the people that I know and love, how do I help them to not only survive, but to thrive in these times? Because it's already hard enough to open a business in France, period. Uh, opening a lot of these lower margin businesses like restaurants or coffee shops in a place that's as expensive to operate where there's not always the greatest support, especially during a season like this where fewer visitors are gonna be coming to the city and a lot of those kinds of businesses really do rely on those visitors to make it through to the end of the year. Yeah, I wanna see what I can do to help with that. So the team development side of things is great. The Paris in my pocket side, we're going through transition and it also means that I have to stay committed to, I really believe that it has legs. I really think it can go somewhere. Hopefully you think that too. And so I need to stick with it through this downswing where we do see a reduction in the income that we're making. We do see a reduction in views. We do see a reduction, whatever, like all the metrics that we're trained to look at because, well, I'm gonna have to neglect certain things to invest in these and it's gonna take them a while, the Paris in my pocket brand specifically, to get its legs and to be able to stand on its own, like we were saying, which is a challenge. It's really, it's actually really, really hard to, to stay with it and not then be like, but I need to go vlog or, but I need to go make itineraries or whatever else. If I believe in it and my team believes in it, which they do, and they've been great and very supportive and I'm really proud of them, you know, then we just got to stay the course. But the other part of that itch is wanting to make sure that I keep communicating with you, especially those of you that have been around for a long time and have stuck with me and, and are in for the long ride. Which brings me to the other kind of almost more existential question, which is what, what, Jay Swanson, what does that brand look like on YouTube and elsewhere? I mean, clearly getting good coffee wherever I go is going to be part of that brand, but we, we, there's more to it. And speaking of my lovely patrons, thanks to today's patron producer, Patrick O'Brien. Really grateful for you. I had a lot of fun daily vlogging at the beginning of the year, and I just wanted to see how it would go, what it would feel like, you know, how satisfying it might be, or 
could I still do it? Can I still pick up a camera and edit a video every night and make something that's like worth watching? It was good. I learned a lot, did get a little bit tired, but I realized in the middle of that that it's not a lifestyle that I wanna maintain long term. I think more importantly than anything, even if I have a lot of fun with it, even if it's something that I would love to get back to from time to time, and I might, I don't know, something in my toolkit that I like to pull out every once in a while. Committing to doing that for like the long haul, it's not sustainable. It's really, it's not, it's not the best. Also, now that I have a team, I have people that are relying on me. Like I, there's some pressure to show up and to actually make sure that things work in a way that makes money so I can pay people. It's just changed the calculus a little bit. Long term, I think it's for the better because if I can properly separate the brands, build press in my pocket into something that stands on its own, it means that I should hopefully have the space and the freedom in the future to come back and really figure out what it is I'm doing on my side. Like if you've followed for a long time, you know that I love writing books and I've gotten back into writing a little bit, but also on the video making side of things, I'd like to experiment with some different stuff, some stuff that takes more time, that requires a little bit more effort to make just one thing. Having the TEDx experience and crafting a talk that took me weeks and weeks and weeks to draft, revise, memorize, and then perform, there's something that was really satisfying about that in a way that is very different from picking up and vlogging on the fly like this, which I really enjoy as well. And I'm not saying I won't do that in the future. I just guess I don't exactly know. I plan on vlogging a fair amount during the Olympics just to give you an inside track on what that's like. But I thought I'd at least acknowledge that it is a slower period on the personal side of things if for no other reason than because I'm putting a lot of work behind the scenes on things that don't even make it into videos. The success of it rests on getting in front of as many people as we can. So obviously, if you're coming to Paris or if you know somebody who's coming to Paris, feel free to share the Paris in my pocket stuff and then we'll see what happens with the Jay Swanson stuff. So weird to talk about myself in the third person like that, but we do that in meetings a fair amount. You might also notice that I don't run credits at the end of the Paris in my pocket stuff because we are really trying to separate those brands and because running the credits tends to be assigned to people that the video is coming to an end and they click away. And you know, with Paris in my pocket, we're trying to put everything I know about YouTube into good action there and teach that to the team that's entrusted me with learning and growing underneath me. So it doesn't mean that I don't love you. Thank you so much to my patrons. You guys make all the difference in the world. And thank you for watching, whether or not you're a patron, of course. But yeah, we'll separate these things out and, and we'll see, we'll have some fun stuff. Patrons do still get previews to those videos before they come out and they still get to weigh in on the thumbnails. So, you know, there's still perks ah, across the board. Anyway, Bordeaux, I'm gonna get back to work now. Emily and I've got a lot of stuff to do, but thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your support. I hope you enjoy this. Even if I don't post as regularly on this channel in the near future, uh, I'll be thinking about you, don't worry. I'll be stressing. I'll be thinking like, I gotta get a video out. I won't forget you. So, uh, you know, please don't forget me.